let's, let's talk about your career. Everybody always says A. Marie should have been a superstar. Because she's pretty, she could dance, she could sing. <laughs> what happened? So I lived in a lot of different places all over the world and the States. It's, what do you you know what happened? it is? It's timing. Like, everything is timing. Like, I'm a big believer in timing. You know, just doing a lot of work, a lot of singing, a lot of traveling on the road, you know. I always it's said so, she man. was the original Beyonce. Beyonce yeah. stole her steez. Oh, you think so? Look at Crazy in Love video and look at A. Marie while we fall in love. Have you ever heard of a Mary? Maybe you remember her catchy tunes like Why Don't We Fall in Love or One Thing from back in the early 2000s. She was on the rise, earning nominations for big awards like the Grammys. But then something happened. Her career started to fade away, leaving many wondering what went wrong. Could it be that the artists like J. Lo that were rumored to have copied her so much decided to tank her career as well? Let's go back to where it all began. Amari, born in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, had a unique upbringing. Her mom was Korean, her dad African-American. They moved around a lot because her dad was in the military. Imagine growing up in places like Alaska, Texas, and even South Korea. Despite the move, a Mary ended up at Georgetown University studying literature. But college wasn't just about books for her. She joined Navy ROTC to help pay for her education. So I lived in a lot of different places all over the world and the States. But it wasn't at college where her fate changed. It was in a McDonald's parking lot where she met a guy named Rich Harrison, who was a music producer. They clicked instantly, and Rich helped her get her foot in the door of the music industry. According to the star herself, after meeting Rich Harrison through a mutual friend, tracks were played by the producer and the singer lent her voice to them. Lightning struck, and the pair knew they scored a home run. The duo started to record demos, which eventually let Amari get recognition from Columbia Records and her first record deal. Amari explained that she and Harrison had a great understanding between them, as while talking with Hip Online, she said, For some reason we had a very special chemistry. When we would work together, something great would happen. Amari's first big break came when she sang the chorus for a song by Nas. From there, she released her own music, like Why Don't We Fall In Love, which became a hit. Her debut album, All I Have, got people talking, especially because of its unique sound. It climbed to number 23 on the list of Billboard Hot 100. The song was heard by millions all over the globe. Rich Harrison also produced and co-wrote Amory's debut album, All I Have, which was released in the same year. It was a massive success as only within the first week of the release, 89,000 copies of the record were sold. By 2009, the album had been certified gold by the Rye AA, as it had 657,000 copies sold by then. The name Amery gained more fame as she collaborated with the big names in the field. The singer went on a tour to promote her album, and she was accompanied by Usher and Nas, and also the rapper Nelly. In 2003, Amari received the award for Best New Artist at the Soul Train Music Awards and won nominations for the Best R&B Soul Album, All I Have, and Best R&B Soul Single Female, Why Don't We Fall in Love. While she recorded another album and landed several other hits, even bagging awards along the way, everything went south at the height of it. And this is where the infamous Colombian record story with her, Beyonce, and J. Lo came from. In an interview with My Play, she described her early process of recording music. I used to record songs that I wrote by using two different tape recorders and two separate tapes. I would start by recording myself on the first tape, singing the song down from top to finish. Then, I would play it back while singing the harmonies and recording them on the second tape. I'd just keep repeating the process, going back and forth between tapes until I had a final version of the full song on one tape with stacked harmonies, backgrounds, and everything. Things were looking up for Amory. Her second album, Touch, featuring the hit One Thing, catapulted her into the spotlight. 
but fame comes with its own set of challenges. Amory faced difficulties with her record label and struggled with getting her music out there the way she wanted. In 2010, Amory announced that she had changed the spelling of her stage name to Amory, explaining, I operate on vibes and intuition, and I believe everything is energy. The vibration of the double I is right for me. Slightly different spelling, completely same pronunciation. Later that year, she premiered a new song titled Outside Your Body. Despite setbacks, Amery kept working on new projects. She explored different sounds and even planned a trilogy of albums called Cymatica. But these projects didn't take off like she hoped. So, what happened? Some say she was overshadowed by other artists, like Beyoncé. There were rumors that Beyoncé's success was somehow linked to Amery's struggles, but it's hard to say for sure. Now imagine this. You're Amery, pouring your heart and soul into your music, only to watch it slip through your fingers. It's like trying to catch smoke with your bare hands. This was Amery's reality back in 2004, when she was crafting her second album. She teamed up with producer Rich Harrison, the mastermind behind hits for J-Lo and Beyoncé. Together, they birthed One Thing in just a few short hours, a track with a vibe that felt just right. But here's the twist. Amory's label, Columbia Records, didn't share her enthusiasm. They wanted something bigger, leaving her and Harrison scrambling to meet their demands. Despite countless attempts to please the powers that be, Columbia kept rejecting their efforts. It was like banging your head against a brick wall, frustrating and futile. Amery and Harrison quickly got back to work, trying to improve the song as asked. The label, however, kept rejecting every version they turned in. The singer said that people just weren't getting it. It would later be discovered that the consistent rejection actually had nothing to do with her song, but was alleged to be an underhanded move by another more powerful singer who turned out to be J. Lo. Reportedly, Jennifer Lopez wanted that song for her album, and as such, she asked Columbia Records, seemingly leading to their rejection of the single in the hopes that it gets tossed. Remember, by that time, Jennifer Lopez herself was a decorated professional singer who had her own bangers released, but you know what they say? It's never enough. At last, after six months of recording the final output, news say Amery and Harrison finally decided to leak it to radio stations instead. But apparently, Columbia was allegedly trying to K off the single since J-Lo couldn't get it and was about to record her own album, Rebirth. With radio stations refusing to pull out one thing from their playlists, Amery got the official release she deserved. The Let's Get Loud hitmaker ended up doing Get Right, another song produced by Harrison. Fans thought it was all suspicious. A while after internet detectives began to trace the origins of Beyonce's 2003 hit, Crazy in Love, to a Mary's One Thing and Why Don't We Fall in Love. In an interview with MTV in 2004, the former Destiny's Child member said that what made Crazy in Love a hit was the horn hook. She explained that it has this go-go feel to it, this old-school feel. I wasn't sure if people were going to get it. This was her version. And here's Beyonce on Crazy in Love. Do you see it too? But it gets more diabolical when you realize that Amari had previously spoken about the fans not getting her sound, which coincidentally had that same go-go feel, the same song that was repeatedly rejected by her record label. That's one hell of a head-scratcher. Anyway, the Bayhive rushed to defend their queen, arguing that Crazy in Love dropped before one thing. But let's rewind a bit. Rich Harrison, Amory's original producer, actually had Crazy in Love before he jumped ship to work with Beyonce. So, who really had it first? Well, just because a song hit the airwaves first doesn't mean it was conceived first. It would appear that Amory's sound might have been swiped long before Beyonce dropped Crazy in Love. At least that was the word on the street after Beyonce got exposed. The singer's father, Matthew Knowles, was alleged to have been secretly pulling the strings behind the scenes, and it was Rich Harrison who seemed to expose him for it. Rich spilled the beans, saying, Yeah, I had it in the chamber. I hadn't really shopped it much. I hadn't really shopped it much because sometimes you don't want to come out of the bag before it's right. 
People don't really get it, and you'll leave them with a foul taste in their mouth. So it was just something that I held on to until I got the call from B. Faced with radio stations refusing to let go of one thing, Amari took matters into her own hands. She leaked the song, determined to give it the spotlight it deserved. And guess what? It soared, defying all odds and earning Amari the recognition she craved. And let's not forget the role of Columbia Records in this tangled web. Amarie didn't hold back, revealing the label's lackluster support for her career. Instead of lifting her up, they seemed more interested in cozying up to already established artists. Talk about a betrayal of trust. But Amarie wasn't one to back down. She fought tooth and nail, leaking her own song and refusing to let Columbia's shady tactics hold her back. And when J-Lo's Get Right bore striking similarities to Amory's sound, it raised eyebrows. Was imitation the sincerest form of flattery or just another blow to Amory's journey? Fast forward to Amory's third album, Because I Love It. Despite her readiness to conquer the music scene, Columbia's internal turmoil caused major delays. It's like having your dreams put on hold indefinitely, with no end in sight. Adding fuel to the fire, Amari spilled the tea on her battles with the powers that be at Columbia Records. She stood her ground against the men who wanted to mold her into something she wasn't, fighting tooth and nail for her artistic vision. It's the classic tale of an artist with a unique voice struggling against the suits who thought they knew better. But the saga doesn't end there. Every few months, the debate resurfaces about whether Beyonce swiped Amari's sound. In fact, one fan commented, I still listen to Amari's music today. I'll love her voice, her style, everything about her is a vibe, yes. I believe Beyonce and J-Lo stole her sound, dance, moves, and style, but true fans know Amari brought Go-Go to the mainstream and nobody has done it better than her. A second fan added, She was great and I'm glad she became an author. Education is one thing JLO and Beyonce can't steal from her. And a third fan wrote, A story behind one thing is that JLo heard it and wanted the song, and the top executives were going to give it to her. When Amari and her producer heard that, they rushed to give it to radio stations to play. JLo was allegedly mad and she went and did Get Right, which sounds a lot like Usher's Ride. I'm glad Amari did that, J-Lo would have kept her vocals and all. The fans also had the opinion that she was actually robbed by the production house, and she deserved better as a user commented. Beyonce stole this blueprint, believe it or not. That's my own opinion after I observed the style, the swag, the leg steps, the swift jumps in the chorus. This is Amari, period. The accusations linger like a ghost from the past with persistent claims that Queen Bey filched Amerie's musical mojo. And as Amerie's journey away from the music industry unfolds, one can't help but wonder if the shadowy dealings at Columbia Records played a role in her roller coaster career. Whether it's the alleged plot against one thing or the questionable handling of Because I Love It, Amerie's story is a cautionary tale about the cutthroat world of the music business. What we do know is that Amari's story is one of talent and perseverance in the face of obstacles. She might not be dominating the charts like she used to, but she's still making music on her own terms. That's all for today. Until next time, thanks for watching. Or